Welcome to this learning session. My name is Mbiayan Ignatius Chopke, your physics teacher in lower seats. Before we go to our lesson, let's do the correction of our last lesson. Question one. A stone is thrown vertically upward with an initial speed u. It reaches a maximum height and returns to the ground. Find an expression for A, the maximum height, B, the velocity on hitting the ground. I am sure each and every one of us answered this question because I don't think if you had followed the lesson we had, you should have difficulties. But for those that tried and could not make it, you can compare your answers with this. For upward motion, we said G is negative, A is equal to negative G. At maximum height, V equals zero. And using the equations of motion, we have this. And if you, do, if you did that very well, then S should be equal to U squared plus two G. B, let the velocity on hitting the ground be V. From this equation, which we had in our last lesson, u equals 0 plus 2as. And if you did that, then the velocity on hitting the ground should be given as 2as. If you had 2, square root of 2as, sorry. So if you had the square root of 2ah, it will still be okay because we have been using h as to replace S. Correction of assignment two. The question goes first. In an attempt to determine the value of acceleration due to gravity by method of free fall, an opposite student decided to record the time taken for a metal ball to fall from different heights. He recorded the result as, or the record, he recorded the result as shown on the table below. Use the data to plot a suitable graph that can be used to determine the value of G. B. Determine the slope of the graph and hence calculate the value of G. C. State one other precaution he used apart from the two cited above. If you actually plotted that graph, you should have something like this. But the table, first of all, should look like this. After going through the table, we saw how our graph looked like. Re Take note that my graph here does not start from the origin. And I have actually written the coordinates there. If you all started from the origin, I don't think there should be any problem. Because if you look at my graph paper here, it does not have the same size as your graph paper in the house, which has 22 squares vertically and 18 squares horizontally. So this, I plotted this based on my own graph paper. Some of you might have plotted, but the most important thing is that choose a good scale and plot a neat and a good graph. If you did that, then you should have something like this. The slope equal change in S all over change in T square, which if we picked arbitrary points or coordinates there, not the ones that are on our table, then we should be able to have something like this. The slope 4.94 meters per second square. And from G giving us two times the slope, if we substitute the value of the slope inside here, then this is what we were expected to have. Some of you might have had something a little bit lower than this or a little bit higher than this. It is not wrong. But if you start having something, a very big value like 11, 12, and so on, or maybe eight downward, then it means your values can be between 9.6 to about 10.4. maybe four. It's okay. But if yours starts going up to 11 and down to 8 or exactly 9, 
means there is a problem. You did not choose a good skin. The precaution now goes. The height as measured is appreciably long so that a reasonable time for the fall can be recorded. You don't just, if you were running that experiment and you decide to take a very short time, there might be a problem because you will not be able to, the time lapse between maybe you releasing and it falling, you might not be able to, to, to meet up with that. So the distance should be somehow long enough so that you take enough time to record that. We move to lesson 22, which is projectile motion. And it will follow this plan. Objectives, prerequisites, housing problems, learning activities, summary, and assignments. You are expected at the end of this lesson to identify a projectile motion. To derive what we call the range, the maximum height, the time of flight of a projectile. You should be able to solve simple problems on projectiles or projectile motion and note some applications of projectile motion. Prerequisite knowledge. You should be able to write down before coming into this lesson. You, If before coming into this lesson, you have not had a good mastery of this, please make sure you have a good mastery of this. On equations of motion under gravity, you should have that ability to describe motion of objects. If objects are falling or rising, you should be able to describe their motion accurately. You should be able to resolve vectors and a good, ma uh, a good mastery of trigonometry, especially Pythagoras theorem. A boy releases a piece of stone from his catapult to shoot a bird perching on a tree branch. What could be the path traveled by the stone? You have a rubber gun, or what you call, people call in your normal language rubber gun, a catapult. Then you put a stone there to shoot a bird. And after maybe you succeeded in doing that, and somebody comes, how could, could you describe the path that the stone took, the road that the stone, the particular path that that stone took in order to kill that bed for you. A ball is released. That is problem situation two. Another person releases a ball horizontally from a height on top of a cliff and it follows a path as seen here on the figure. How can you describe the motion of this ball? And how can you possibly describe the path of the ball? Activity. Throw a stone. You try to test this at home. I'm sure some of you are seated where you have stones around you. Or maybe a small ball around you. Throw a rubber ball against a wall. And note the path of the ball towards the wall. So you look at the way it moves towards the wall and also the way it comes back. Increase the angle a little. If I throw it a little bit like this, I try to project it at a bigger angle and also throw like that. Increase the angle of the of projection of the ball and note the maximum height attained for the angle. Now, if you do that, or if you have actually done that, does the angle, does the maximum height, when you throw, you discover the height of the object. If you change the angle and throw at the same speed, you see a different height and so on. Now, does the maximum height increase or decrease with increase of projection angle? If you keep on increasing the angle, or if you have actually carried out this, what can be your response? To this activity. Possible response. Maximum height will increase. The maximum height will increase. Now we look at what projectile motion is all about. A projectile is a particle or a body which is given an initial velocity or momentum in a field. 
If the field is a gravitational field, for example, that of the Earth or any other massive object, then the motion of the projectile is controlled by gravity alone, what we call the weight. In this situation, we are talking about the Earth. A stone thrown horizontally on a story building, for example, if you throw a stone, if you are standing on top of a story building and you shoot a stone horizontally, that is a projectile motion. The path of the projectile is called a trajectory. So the path at which a projectile will move, we call it a trajectory. And a trajectory can be circular or parabolic. It means that the path of a stone that is projected or an object projected can either be circular, the path could be circular or parabolic. And we take note here, a projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion of a particle, which is given an initial velocity and it moves under the forces of the field. What does it mean here? If you look at the previous examples we have had, we were talking about just throwing an object vertically upward. It goes up and comes down, goes up and comes down no horizontal movement but a projectile motion requires that like your catapult that you you you, you the, maybe the stone you projected from your catapult you discover that when the stone left it did not fall back at the point where you were standing it covered a horizontal distance and fell somewhere and then also moved a vertical distance so that is a projectile so with projectile motion we talk about two independent motions horizontal and vertical. The vertical component has nothing to do with the horizontal component, so we treat them as individual motions. Examples of projectile, an electron projected at right angles to a uniform field and is deflected to the positive plate. The path is parabolic and the motion is controlled by electric force. force sorry. Next, an electron projected horizontally at right angles to a magnetic field. The path is circular and motion controlled by magnetic forces. When you shall be doing magnetic fields, you will appreciate this more better. A bullet fired from a gun is also an example. A stone released from catapult. An adler doing high jump. A thrown rubber ball rebouncing from a wall, just like the activity we had. So we want to look at this motion can be, we have subdivided it into two main parts. A, a body projected horizontally. We project an ob object horizontally. Now we consider a particle projected with an initial velocity u from the top of a story building of height h. This is it. And it strikes projected from here. We see that it ends up at this point. It did not come to this point, meaning that it did not just fall directly, but it moved like that, covering a vertical distance from here to here or here, if you want to look at it in this other direction, and then a horizontal distance, and strikes the ground at a distance r from the building, as shown in the diagram below. We have seen the diagram. This is the height, the horizontal distance, and then the particle, since it performs a particular path, which could be a parabolic or a circular path, which we are going to see from our equations, which path this one actually follows. Then you see that you can study the motion of this particle or this ball at different points. So at this particular point on the curve, we can also get the distance from here from here, that is the horizontal distance, and we can get the height of the particle at this point. So at each point along this curve, we can always get the distance, the velocity, the acceleration, and so on. Now, here the body covers both horizontal and vertical distances as we have seen above. We said our motion can be both horizontal and vertical, since a projectile deals with both vertical and horizontal motion. So, acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. This is for horizontal motion. Acceleration is zero. 
And we know that from our first equation of linearly accelerated motion, Okay, we have, from our first equation of linearly accelerated motion, we have u equals vx equals ux plus that. So the final velocity in the horizontal direction stays the same. So the, part, the, the, the initial velocity at which the particle was projected, which is this, stays the same all through the motion in the horizontal direction. Since there is no force that even acts in the horizontal direction, Gravity acts vertically upward or downward. Since there is no force, acceleration equals zero. And vertically, since the object is falling from a height as we have seen here, then A is, AY is equal to G, which is a constant. And the velocity component, the, the final velocity component in the vertical direction is given as this. And since the object was initially projected in the horizontal direction, it wasn't moving upward. So the initial speed in the, or the initial velocity in the vertical direction is equal to zero. So with that, we see that the, the speed in the vertical direction is provided by gravity, which is equal to this. And the distance covered, sorry, in the horizontal direction is just given by R equals UX, that's the horizontal component of the velocity times the time. And in the vertical, we see this is equal to ut. We are supposed to have, sorry, t here. This is h equals to uyt plus half gt squared. So uy here, there is a t that is supposed to be there. But since in the vertical direction, since the object was projected horizontally, vy equals zero. Sorry, uy equals zero. And we have this given as this where t is the time of flight. So from h equal to this, we can find the time of flight, which is that I'm possibly just substituting that t in our equation here. We have x equal to that. And if we look at, if we try to do some manipulations here by squaring this equation, we now see that this is an equation of this form, h equals to ax squared. And since g and ux are constant, then the trajectory, if you can recognize this equation, that is an equation of a, pro of a parabola. So the motion of this object is parabolic. We look at the second. A body projected vertically now upward, that is b. Let us consider a body projected at an angle to, at an angle to the horizontal from the ground. The body moves along a parabolic path, reaches a maximum height. You throw it, it moves, reaches a maximum height, and then returns, and returns to the ground. Let the projectile be projected with an initial speed u at an angle theta to the horizontal. We see it clearly there. This is our projectile that was sent off. It went like that and then came back with different parameters on it. Now, a body... Horizontal motion, we know that it was projected vertically, so there is no horizontal acceleration as we saw. But if we now see that if you resolve this, if you resolve this, we are going to have u because u here is acting like hypotenuse in Pythagoras theorem. That is why I said you could, you needed to have an idea, more ideas on that. So if you do that very well, then the horizontal component is u cos theta. The, of the initial velocity, the velocity, the final velocity will be given as that. But since, uh, but since u x and it's equal to, it, since u x has been given to be this and a x is equal to zero in the horizontal direction, we see that the final velocity, the velocity along the horizontal direction, even at the start to the end, does not change. And if we do that, we substitute that we see from the equation of motion, ax in the horizontal direction is zero. And if we remove that, we have this as our equation. Similarly, in the vertical direction, y is, ay is equal to that. As we see, vy is equal to that. vy is equal to this because g is negative up here. And then y equals to uyt plus half ayt squared. And if we substitute that, then we end up with this. And then time of flight, we said this is the time taken for 
to rise from the level of projection to that. And at maximum height, dy is equal to zero. So if we substitute that, we have t equals to u sine theta on g to be the time of flight. And also the time, sorry, that's the time to reach the maximum height. Now the time for the whole journey, the time it took for the, for the object to go and comes back to the same point, which is the time required for the object to return to the level from where it was. But the time of this was the time to reach the maximum height. So at that point, at maximum, when it returns, displacement is equal to zero. And if we substitute here, we come out with this. So we realize that the time for the whole journey is twice the time to reach the maximum height and to come back. So the time it takes to reach the maximum height is the same as the time it takes to return. So the maximum height reach. At maximum height, we know that from this equation, V is equal to zero. And we substitute S by H as we had. If we do that, then we end up having this one as our equation to of height, of maximum height. Maybe the distance covered from the point where the object was projected to the maximum height. And then the range here is the horizontal distance from the point of projection to the point where the projector hits the projection plane again. So we saw that the horizontal component, and we are using big T here, which is the time of life because we are talking about the whole motion from here to here. So that is the range, the whole motion, the time it took for that. And if we do that, then our range will be equal to, we substitute the value of t here, we end up having this, which is equal to that. And from the range, the range is maximum when sine 2 theta is maximum. And since sine of an angle is a maximum when the angle is 90, so sine 90 is, 90, is uh, 1, as we know. And that's the maximum value of a sine function that we know. If we substitute that, then we discover that theta. So if you project your act, your object at an angle of 45 degrees, then you, up, you, you are expected to have a maximum distance covered by that object in the horizontal direction. No other distance apart from an angle of 45 will you have, which is greater than that. And then equation of path. We now have y equals to this. As we know, these two equations we have seen, for the horizontal and vertical, if we make t the subject in this and we substitute inside this equation 2 as indicated here, then we have an equation of this form. And we look at this equation, we see it is therefore in the form of a y equals to ax plus bx squared, which is also a projectile, a parabola, the, 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 the motion of this object projected from vertically upward is also parabolic. And then we look at some applications of this. The physics of projectile motion is very evident in modern warfare. Many missiles travel from a point to another following parabolic path. Knowing the distance from an army camp to the enemy, uh, to the enemy position, the angle of projection required for the missile to hit the enemy target can be calculated from using this equation that we have seen. And the nozzle of the gun or the rocket launcher is then set accordingly. In artillery, for example, warfare, when the range is known, when you know the maximum distance that the object can cover, for example, the only variable in the equation, not even the maximum distance, just you knowing the equation of the range, we can get, we can vary the angle and vary the initial velocity to actually locate where our target is. In the case of large guns, the velocity of projection may be altered by varying just the propellant charge used. An exercise, a tennis ball projected horizontally from the top of a vertical cliff. This meters high with a velocity of 10 meters was given as that. Find the time to reach the ground, the maximum component of the velocity when the ball hits the ground, the distance from the foot of the cliff to where it that. So if you look at the answer very well or the response, you see everything is there. We are just simply applying what we have done in the lesson, a equal to zero, ux equals to 10. And if we apply all of that, then the ball falls vertically under the influence of gravity. Its vertical motion is independent of the motion. And if we substitute that, then t should give us, from this equation, t should give us 3.19 seconds. And for the b part of it, 
you see that v is equal to gt where acceleration in the vertical direction is zero and if you do that then we have our distance to be 31.3 meters and see from the foot of the cliff to where the ball hits the ground if we use this equation that is the horizontal rate the range then we should have 31.9 meters Exercise 2. A projector is fired with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Calculate the time of flight, the maximum height attained, and the range. So if you substitute just the formula for type for maximum for the time of flight, you just substitute. We have 10.2 seconds for maximum height attained. We substitute that. We have 127.6 meters and the maximum range we substitute that to have 883 meters and then summary a projectile like we said is the a particle that can move both in horizontal and vertical motion that can undergo both horizontal and vertical motion which are independent and the part of a projectile is a traje is called a trajectory and a trajectory can be circular or parabolic and then we look at also the time of flight that was given the time to reach maximum height, the maximum height reach, the formula, the formula for the range, the formula for maximum range, and also the formula for something to get the path, the equation of path. And assignment, a bumper in a military mi mi mission is flying horizontally at a height of 3,000 meters above the ground of at 60 kilometers per minute. It drops a bomb on a target on the ground, determine the acute angle between the vertical and the line joining the bumper and the target at the instant the bomb is released. And secondly, consider a rock, a rock thrown off a bridge of height 75 meters at an angle of 25 uh, degrees, uh, degrees with respect to the horizontal. The initial speed of the ball is 15 meters per second. Find the maximum height reached by the rock the time it takes to reach a maximum height, the place where the rock lands, and the height, the time at which the rock lands, and E, the velocity of the rock, that is, you are looking for the both the magnitude and the direction just before it lands or just before it hits the ground. And that marks the end of our lesson. And our next lesson will be forces, nature, and classification.